As the offering bag is going around, I'd like to bring your attention to the bulletin. Uh, please take note that there are several uh, vacancies available both in ICS and at TEC. Uh, TEC, the Expatriate Centre, is looking for Managing Director. So if you know anyone or if you're interested, you can write in to TEC or to bristol.leong at tc.place. Uh, ICS is also uh, employ, uh, having two vacancies because uh, our church members, our staff are moving away uh, to a new uh, country. So if you have uh, someone who is interested to be the Director of Discipleship or an Operation Executive Assistant, you are welcome to encourage them to write into the respective email addresses. Last but not least, uh, there will be a mission trip coming up sometime in uh, March from the 24th to the 30th of March. The location is at Chomburi, Bangkok, Thailand. Some of you might not be familiar with Chomburi, but uh, I'm sure many of you have heard about Pattaya. So Chomburi is located in between Bangkok and Pattaya. We will be partnering a local church to run the character camp and the parenting courses. There will be 100 children coming for this character camp. So if you'd like to join us, please make sure that you uh, contact uh, Kathleen. The cost of it is about 5,500 RMB all in. ICS will subsidise the local transports. Uh, for those of you who are youth, you'd like to join us as part of your uh, uh, school project, you can also do so, to, but find out from uh, Kathleen for more information. We are looking for about maybe... Uh, 15 of you to join us and um, you will be able to get the full information from Kathleen right after the church service today at the information table. If not, you're welcome to write into her at Kathleen, kathleen.young at ichhq.org. Okay? Now, let me begin this morning's sermon by uh, giving you a summary of all that I've taught over this pulpit before I go into the main text for today. Christianity is not a religion. Christianity is a relationship with the living God. Amen? Amen. He is alive today and He still journey with His children on a daily basis. God cherishes His time and His relationship with us. Once upon a time, before we were saved, we are sinners. Sin nature lives in us. It's all about ourselves, our own lives, the way things, we want things to be done our own way. We, are, we seem to be the master of our own destiny, destiny. And we are living a life that's apart from God. People begin to look for God through religion. But Christianity is the only so-called religion where God came to look for us. The law was given to us to show us what sin is. And that none of us are able to use our own strength to make ourselves stand right before God, just like we have never seen before. Sin will always condemn us because man will never be able to use philosophy, religion and good works to be able to attain a right standing with God. When we understand the gospel, when we understand the unconditional love of God, that He sent forth His only Son to die for us on the cross of Calvary, while we were yet sinners, His blood, Jesus' blood was shed for us. We have the forgiveness of sin by receiving Jesus Christ as our Lord and Saviour. We, we are declared to be righteous before God. We are blessed with all the spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That means we are accepted in the Beloved. We are seen as righteous, holy, because we are hidden in Christ. And when we appreciate this spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus that has been bestowed upon us through the abundance of God's grace, we begin to respond by saying, Father, I, not, I will not live for myself anymore. I choose to live for you. Amen? Galatians 2.20 says, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live. The life that I live, I live for Christ who loved me and gave himself for me. Once upon a time, we used to live based on what we want to do, what we plan to do, how we want to do things. But after we have received Christ because Jesus is the Lord of our lives. Amen? 
He's just not, he's not just the Savior of our lives, He's the Lord of our lives. When He's the Lord of our lives, He will be involved in every decision that we make. It doesn't include Sunday when I, or whenever you go, I say, God, what clothes should I wear? But every major decision in your life, you are supposed to seek the face of God because He's the master of your life. Amen? Do you follow? Are you here with me today? Yes. You know, the thing about this setup is you're so far away. And I know that you like this setup because you can hide. But don't sleep. So when you're living for God, you're living your life to glorify God. And you allow God to journey with you on a daily basis. Amen. On a daily basis. Not just on Sunday. When you are allowing God to journey with you on a daily basis, which means you should be spending quality time with God every day. Oh, pastor, no time. I'm very busy man, you know. I have no time for quiet time. You have time. If you don't manage time, time will manage you. And for those of you who are pretty senior in position, you get to choose when you work from home, when you go home because you're taking a conference call at night, you have time. Amen. Tell your neighbour, he's talking about you. Huh? Don't come to church and say, oh, how I wish this sister is in church. This sermon is for her, you know. No, this sermon is for you. Amen. Amen. So when you have created ha that habit, the spiritual habit of doing your devotion, praying, which means praying doesn't mean that you pray in your closet only. Because God is not just found in your closet. You should spend quality time with the Lord in your closet. But because God is omniscient, He knows everything. God is omnipresent, He's everywhere. And God is omnipotent, He's all-powerful. You can talk to God anytime. In fact, God hurts your murmuring. God hurts your frustration. God hurts your struggles. God hurts your unspoken thoughts. And He will speak to you when you seek His face through His Word and also through the inner witness of the Holy Spirit. Amen? And now that you are safe, we all know that life on earth is temporal. It could be 50 years, 80 years, at most 120 years. But you have a destiny in heaven. But while you're on earth, everything that you do, you are stewards of everything that God has blessed you with, including your own life. You live to glorify God. And wherever God has placed you in a marketplace, you are there to worship God in your workplace. You glorify God through your work. And at the same time, you are connected with God daily. He will grant you wisdom to deal with the situation that you face at work because He lives in you. And if you are faced with a crossroad in life, you are to seek God, consecrate your life to God and allow God to be part of your decision process. We are supposed to live by faith. Hebrews 11.6 says, But without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For he who comes to God must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. The Bible tells us that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Impossible means impossible. The only way to please God is through faith. It means we trust God for His character, the promise of His word given to us, and that the fulfilment of His covenant obligation to us when we have faith in God. The Christian lifestyle is a lifestyle of faith from now towards eternity. Faith in God is a very personal matter because it is between God and us. Faith in God is a very personal matter. Every one of you is supposed to exercise your faith in God. Because our Christian walk is a walk of faith. Amen. So each of us must develop our faith in God. Because you are able to know God, you can know Him more and more and more. Just like you get to know a friend or just like you get to know your 
husband or your wife better after you're married. More revelation of who your wife and your husband is like. So faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. What gives substance to our faith is the Word of God. We are very uncomfortable in walking in faith because we are so used to seeing is believing. Right? Now, let me give a very simple example. Let's say you're in between job or you're, sick, you're going through a few rounds of interview and you have finished your, your final interview and you're negotiate, you're talking through with the global or regional HR director and you have agreed with the terms. But you have not received the email yet. Many of you are still worried. Why? Because you have not received the email yet. Why are you worried? Because you're concerned when the phone rings. The headhunter might say, Mr. So-and-so, I'm so sorry. Although all the terms have been discussed, all of a sudden, the company has a freeze of manpower. Whatever has been spoken went down the drain. Or you don't run to receive a phone call from the headhunter by saying, oh, they found a better candidate, so all deals are off the table. So we have developed this mentality that when I receive the email, when I sign on the dotted line, then I believe I have a job. Aren't we like that? Very few. Why, 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 why are we like that? Because we have lost confidence in man's word. But the Bible tells us, without faith, it is impossible to please God. That whoever comes to Him must believe that He is and that He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. What gives substance to your faith? It's the Word. The Word of God that you read. How God revealed Himself to you, His character, His plan and His purposes of your life. There are a lot of young people here today. Don't apply your Christian faith when you are 38 years old. You can apply your Christian faith today, even before you go to university. Because God is willing to work with you, walk with you from childhood to adulthood. Amen? Amen. Tell your neighbour, he's talking about you. You look very young to me. <laughs> Praise God. So please turn with me to um, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8 to 12, after I've laid this foundation for you. Hebrews 11, verse 8 to 12 says, By faith Abraham obeyed, and he was called to go out to a place, to the place which he would receive an inheritance. And he went out, not knowing where he was going. By faith he dwelt in the land of promise, as in a foreign land, country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he waited for the city which has foundation, whose builder and maker is God. By faith, Sarah herself also received strength to conceive. seed, And she bore a child when she was past the age, because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one man and him as good as dead were born as many as the stars of the sky in multitude innumerable as the sand which is by the seashore. Frankly, these are the two, faith and obedience are the two most challenging things for us to do because it is counter what we want in life. It is not easy to be obedient because many of us want to do things our own way. We want to run our own lives. We also want, are also very uncomfortable with faith or just simply taking God's word at face value. In short, to, think, to simply take God for His word is faith. Now, I'll use this illustration, I'll use it again. On your way to church today, maybe your children have said, Dad, let's go and eat Shake Shack, right? And then you tell your, your, your child or your children, say, we're on the way to church, you're going to kids' church, 
Let's go to Shake Shack after church. The whole car will be shaking. Why? Because your kids will be jumping up and down and say, Yes, we got to Shake Shack. Are they at Shake Shack yet? No. They're still on the way to church. But why are they rejoicing? Because they take your word for it. That they believe that the Father is a man of integrity. The, ma- the Father will take them to Shake Shack after church. Please don't go and eat dim sum. <laughs> because that will break the promise. And when we begin to do that, it will cause our children to doubt our words. So because of many broken promises between relationships, we have developed the habit of doubting man's word. So when we are walking with God, we tend to doubt God's word. We tend to not believe until we see it before our eyes. The thing is, you do not need to have faith when you have already seen it. That's the greatest struggle. Right? Now, verse 8 to verse 10 of the main text says, By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which we would receive as an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. By faith, he dwelt in the land of promise as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he waited for the city which has foundation, whose builder and maker is God. When God called Abraham to leave the land of earth to a place that he will show him, Abraham didn't even know where he was going. But yet he obeyed. Now let me speak to some of you. For those of you whose personality is such that when you go on a holiday, you plan by the hour. And you need to know where you are going, when you are leaving, what bus you are taking, what plane you are taking, which hotel you are staying. And you react when things get out of the schedule. You will struggle if you are Abraham. Huh? You call me, but I don't know where am I going? Yeah. Go say, leave the land of earth. I will show you a place. And you say, wow, Pastor Daniel, why are you telling me all this? It's because you're Christian. God said that you're going to heaven. You're going to, are you there yet? But why are you here today? Because you believe. You're Christian. Where are you going? Where is the city? It is found in Revelation chapter 21, verse 19 to 20. It says, The foundation of the wall of the city was adorned with all kinds of precious stones. The first foundation was of jasper, the second sapphire, the third caldoni, the fourth emerald, the fifth sardonyx, the six sardius, the seven chrysolite, the eight beryl, and nine topaz, ten chrysoprase, the eleven jessin, and the twelve emptis. The twelve gates were twelve pearls, each individual gate was of one pearl, and the street of the city was pure gold like transparent glass. In this city, where the sun is not needed because the glory of God lights up the place, those people whose names are written in the book of life will reside in this new city. Praise be to God! Amen! When your name and my name are written in the book of life, this will be the place that we will recite. Abraham saw it and was glad. We had to wait in expectation to recite in this city that God has prepared a mansion for us. It is our eternal home. This is a destination all of us will be heading for eternity. This is a general calling for all who receive Christ to enter into God's presence and eternal home and destination. We have faith in this truth because it is revealed in God's plan that's found in the scripture. We're able to have faith just like Abraham had because it is written. You're not there yet, but yet you believe. Please hold that thought. You're not there yet, but yet you believe. Why? You have faith in the written word of God. That when you breathe your last breath, you will be there. Are you there yet? No, you are not. Why do you believe? Because it's written in the Word. So similarly, it is important for us to have faith in God as we walk out our life today. Maybe you're 18 years old, you're about to go to university, you pray out the plan and purpose for your, 
for your life. You ask God what kind of uh, uh, faculty you're supposed to go through. You pray through, you have peace. You step out in faith to, to go to university. For the first time, you're leaving your home away from your parents. You're living alone. And you believe that God has a good plan for you. You pray through that this is the faculty that you're supposed to be in and that God will grant you the wisdom and the knowledge to go through all the challenges. And then when you're about to graduate, you pray through which company you're supposed to join and then you apply for the job and you commit it to God and God opened the door for you to go into this company. You trust God, God journey with you all the way until you go to this city that He has promised you. Amen? So when we live a consecrated life, Consecration is coupled with prayer. You cannot pray, like Ian Bao said, you cannot pray without consecrating your life. Both go hand in hand. So at every stage of your life, you will experience God. That's why it is a relationship that you, got, you talk to God on a daily basis, in good times and in bad times. And when you are about to go through a bad time, God would have warned you. God would have spoken to you. And you would have prepared for those times. Does it mean that Christians will not go through difficult times like now, as the economy has slowed? No. We also need to remember that God has blessed us tremendously before the economic crisis, before COVID. Just like the Old Testament, seven years of abundance prepared them for seven years of famine. It is when we do not commit our life to God, it is when we do not know God, then we blame God. We become bitter against God. So it is important to walk with God and it has His word as the anchor of our faith. Abraham had a specific call on his life. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 say, Now the Lord said to Abraham, Get out of your country, from where your family, and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. God had a call, uh, Abraham had a call, all of us also have a call in our lives. Amen? Because we are children of the living God. He's the master craftsman of our lives. All of us are wonderfully, beautifully and uniquely made. Some of us belong to the Global Talent Development Program, where your Fortune 500 com companies design positions for you and post you according to their plan for you. Of course, probably you can negotiate. But some of this planning fails. But if you believe that you are a precious child of the living God and that He's the master craftsman of your life, this God who gave you life has good thoughts for you, good plans for you, good purpose for you. He knows your gifts. He knows your talents. He knows your experience. He knows what's the next step for your life. The question is, are you willing to allow Him to journey with you? We can either walk with God or we can walk away from God. But when we walk with God, What gives substance to our faith is the Word of God. God's Word has unrivaled authority, immense power, and complete reliability. Now, because Christianity is not a religion, but a relationship, you need to know God personally. And how do you know God? By experiencing Him. How do you know your friend? By spending time with your friend. Knowing his character. Knowing his personality. For our walk with God, unless you step up in faith, you will never experience God. Let me give you two scriptures that talks about God's character. Remember, let me, before I read it, huh, I want to refer you back to just now the email that you're waiting from the HR department that enables you to sign on the dotted line. Because you're, you have this habit, seeing is believing. Right? You have lost trust in humans' words and promise. 
Even today, when someone signs a contract, they might not even honour the contract. Thus, we lost trust in people. But when it comes to God, Numbers 23 verse 19 says, God is not a man. God is not that kind of people who will not honour His word. It says, God is not a man that He should lie, nor a son of man that He should repent. Has He said and will He not do it? Has He spoken and will He not make it good? Remember, taking God's word for it, that this is the kind of God that we believe. That's who He is. Psalms 89, verse 34 to 35 says, My covenant I will not break, nor alter the word that has gone off my lips. One I have sworn by my holiness, I will not lie to David. That means God and His word are one. So going back to what faith is, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Amen? So when you are walking with God, you are doing your devotion every day, you are journaling every day. Yes, okay, maybe sometimes you are busy, you miss a day or two, it's fine. But if you have been journeying, journaling, reading your Bible, praying throughout the day, just talking to God, remember, I want to emphasize, He knows your thoughts, He knows your struggles, He knows your complaint, He knows those things that you are dealing with. And when you read the Bible, God will speak to you. Why? Because He's alive. He is a personal God. So the sooner you establish the relationship and move away from religion, the better it is for you. Amen. Right? So, when you know God and His Word can be taken as His promise, that's where you build your faith. Now, let me, use, let me say this one more time. Very frankly, last Sunday I said something like in this line too. Maybe you are at a stage whereby you are about to make a certain decision. Maybe you belong to a city where it's very close to the deadline and you need to make a decision either to move to the UK or Canada. Right? Please, I'm not talking about politics. Huh? You're about to move to UK or Canada because you're about to, the, the, the promise to have a, a local residency and a passport is going to expire. You are going there without seeking the face of God. Because it's a good idea. Everybody is doing it. Right? Bear in mind, huh? the reason for Brexit is because the local people are losing jobs. Their jobs are not protected. The European Union people are coming in. They chose Brexit. And you are a newbie. You're moving there, competing with the local job. You might not get the same kind of job that you have here in the UK. Example, if you call and you just go with the flow, you pay. You need to be confident that God has a good plan for you, good purpose for you. You need to seek His face. Is it a good idea or God's idea? But if really God said, it's okay, go. Go. I will explain to you why, okay? So, it is important to get a word from God. Why? Because faith is established on the word. Let me show it to you. Turn with me to Luke chapter 7, verse 7 to 9. Luke 7, 7 to 9 says, Therefore, I did not even think myself worthy to come to you, but say the word, and my servant will be healed. For I am a man placed under authority, having soldiers under me, and I say to you, Go, and he goes, and a man uh, and, and another come, and he comes, and to my servant do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him, and turned around and said to the crowd that follow, and I say to you, I have not found such great faith not even in Israel. Now, we're talking about faith today, right? Faith is in anchored in the Word of God. And using this passage, it substantiates the truth. So this centurion, he's not even a Jew. He's one of the officers in the Roman army. He came to Jesus 
and said, Jesus, my servant is healed, but you don't even need to come to my house. I know how it works. I'm an officer. There are soldiers under me. If I ask them to go, they will go. Ask them to come, you will come. You, Jesus, you are the son of the living God. You are the creator of heaven and earth. When you say a word, let there be... Of course, he didn't say that, right? But when you go back to Genesis, when God said, let there be light, and there was light. So there's power, creative power in the word of God. So Jesus, you don't have to come to the house, just say the word. And that creative power, the authority that comes with your word will bring about the healing of my, my, my servant. And what did Jesus say? I have not so found such great faith, not even in, in Israel. Why did Jesus say that he had great faith? Jesus said that he had great faith because he trusted the power and the authority of the Word of God. But the thing about the church of today is we have departed so far away from the Word. Many of us make decisions even without seeking the face of God. We don't even have a book and chapter and verse from God because we are living our life our way. We are the master of our own destiny and God has no part in it. So don't turn around and ask God when things go south, when you reach a new country and you feel miserable and lousy, where are you, God? God didn't ask you to go. But if God didn't ask you to go, He will pave a way for you. So don't put the cart before the horse. I might sound very hard today, but I better say it before you make major decisions. I'm not saying to say the Lord, but these are things that we will all deal with one day. We deal with different situations. I have a lot of, let me put it this way, sometimes when I counsel Christians, when they talk about seeking the face of God, they already have a preconceived idea of what they want to do. They've already made their decision. The verse that they, they got from God is not even something close to what God wants them to do because we have already made the decision. That's not, not the Lordship of Christ. The Lordship of Christ says, God, I have no agenda. You tell me what you want and I'll do it because you are the Lord of my life. So get a word from God to anchor your faith. Abraham had a specific call. You and I have a specific call because we live our life for Christ, because we belong to Him as He is our Lord and Saviour. Therefore, we need to seek the face of God before we make any major decision like investment, start a business, change job, relocate, migrate to another country, including any other major decision in life. One of the principles of faith is we do not make, move a step unless the Word of God shows us the way and shines before us like a lantern. The question is, can you hear God? Yes, you can. John 10, 27 says, My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Are you Jesus' sheep? Yes, you are. Can you know God's voice? Even the inner witness, Romans 8, 14, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Can you be led by God? Can you know the voice of God? Some people say, oh, Pastor Daniel, it's very difficult to hear God's voice, you know. I tell you, you can hear. Ready? Let's say this morning, you just quarreled with your wife. Or you just had a bad phone call with your parents from overseas. And then there's this voice in your heart that says, go and apologise. Go and say sorry. That's the voice of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I say that's the voice of the Holy Spirit. You can hear God. It's a matter of whether you're obeying. Right? Very few of you have received a phone call from me. <laughs> Pastor call me, it's not good news, right? But let's say if I were to call you after the service today, I happen to have your phone number, and I'll dial that number and say, hello, 
Then you say, who's that? I say, oh, Pastor Daniel. Oh, Pastor Daniel. Nice to hear from you. I hope you say that, huh? <laughs> but this is the first time I hear a voice. Can you imagine if I were to call you repeatedly 10 times on the same day? The moment I say hello, of course, you say, oh, Pastor, you got caller ID, you are around right days, right? But if I say hello for the 10th time, if there's no caller ID, you say, yes, Pastor Daniel. Why? Because you recognize my voice. So if we are God's sheep and we can be led by God in our heart, we can hear God. But of course, that's the second safeguard. The first safeguard is, has God spoken? Do you journal? If you do journal, for me, let's say hard copy, you can always flip back. Use highlighter. Whatever thing that God is speaking to you. Important verses. How God is dealing with you. Don't just ask God about about um, major decision. Maybe you have a fight with your siblings about looking after your, your parents who are, because all of you are overseas. And then you do your quiet time and the Lord remind you, honour your parents. That's God. All scripture is God-breathed. It's useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. 2 Timothy 3.16 The more you yield to God, for example, when you say, honour your parents, maybe you have not been supporting your parents financially and your siblings have been doing it. And the Lord speaks to you through the verse, honour your parents, give the money. You to the Holy Spirit, the more you yield to the Holy Spirit, like what I said just now, when you are supposed to say sorry, the more you yield to the Holy Spirit, the sharper you get. Amen. The more you listen to God, the sharper you get. So how do you journal? You know, I, I, I cannot share with you this sermon unless I practice it in my own life, right? Now, I don't know how many books have I used up. Let me share with you my personal journey so that you know how to allow God to speak to you. As I've mentioned, some 70 years, 70, 19 years ago, I had a good job, good ministry. I had a good apartment. My son was three and a half years old. We have an apartment where we walked out of the apartment because it was ground floor, it's the swimming pool. I was very comfortable in ministry, very comfortable in my life, but I felt that the Lord wanted us to move to Shanghai, to China. And then I asked God, God, do you want me to leave or do you want me to stay? Is it a good idea? Is it your idea or what? You know, had I had too much uh, dim sum or something like that? And I, I actually go back to Hebrews 11 verse, one, verse 6 says, without faith, it is impossible to please God that whoever believes in Him, uh, without faith, it's impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that He is and that He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. So, how do I diligently seek Him? I say, God, I surrender my life to you. I'm very comfortable. But because you are the Lord of my life, if you think that I, I have to go, I will go. But you tell me, I don't want to go unless you tell me to go. Amen. Bring you back to the last two Sunday sermon. Unless the Lord says so, don't step out of the boat. Unless God called Moses to go. Moses wouldn't go to take the land because they have to fight the, the inhabitants of the land. So Moses told told the Lord, unless your presence go with me, do not send me to a place where you are not sending me. So in the same application, I say, God, tell me. Likewise for you. Not just today. You might not be at the crossroad of your life today, but there will come a day when you need to apply this truth. Right? So I say, God, tell me. So He knows my, my struggles. And, I, and I've been reading the Bible 
doing my journaling and then this verse came when I was, after I prayed at the beach, I was reading my Bible and this Michael 2.10 says, 2.10a. Remember, I was struggling, very comfortable. This scripture just goes, it jumps out of the scripture, of, of the Bible. It says, arise and depart, for this is not your rest. It, there's no Singapore and Shanghai there in the Bible. If you find the word Singapore and Shanghai, please tell me, okay? <laughs> but because God is alive, and I, I, I humble myself to seek His face, He used scriptures to speak to me. He said, arise and depart, for this is not your rest. Then I go to my journal. Oh, on, the, on, on May the 22nd at 10.15 a.m. in the morning at East Coast Singapore Katong Park, the Lord spoke to me in Micah 2.10, Arise and depart, for this is not your rest. God, okay. Are you sure? Can you speak to me again? Talk to Him. And then the Lord spoke to me in Micah chapter 4, verse 10. Be in pain and labour to bring forth, O daughter of Zion, like a woman in birth pangs. For now you shall go forth from this city. You shall dwell in a field, and to Babylon you shall go. Then you shall be delivered, that the Lord will redeem you from the land of your enemies. Birth pangs is like talking about birthing forth a new ministry. How does it apply to you, for example, if it is you, right? Let's say you are um, looking for a, starting a new job or starting a new business. You might be an entrepreneur you are impregnated with this vision of a certain thing, of a certain product, of a certain business strategy. You are impregnated because it is a God's idea. It drops into your heart, it will come out in your mind. Right? An intuition will drop into your heart, a God idea, and then it will come into your mind. It's a walk with God. How does this verse apply to you? You are about to birth forth a new idea. For me, this verse is, I'm going to birth forth a new ministry in Shanghai. Then I tell God, say, okay, I will submit to you. I will go. It's confirmed. I'll go to Babylon. Babylon, Shanghai, Babylon. I'll go. I don't know what's ahead of me. Why? Just like Abraham, he left the land of earth without knowing where he was going. I left for Shanghai without knowing what's going to happen. The rest is history. You're here. You are the birth of idea. Amen. So what else? Then ask God. Because you can continue to talk to God. Then I say, God, what do you want me to do? What's the strategy? Tell me, what's the strategy? I was walking on the beach. Tell me, God. What? You, you are the God of creation. You are the, the God who created everything. Um, of course, you, you have the uh, strategy for me. Then in Nahum, chapter 3, verse 15b to 17, it says, Make yourself many, like the swarming locusts. You have multiplied your merchants more than the stars of heaven. The locusts will plunder and flies away. Your commanders are like swarming locusts, and your generals are like great grasshoppers, which come in the hedges on a cold day when the sun rises, they flee away, and the place where they are, they are is not known. So God said, multiply after yourself. Disciple people. All of you are generals. Generals of your own right in your own industry. There are many people, the reason why we preach 40 minutes here on Sunday is to equip you, to train you with the Word. Can you imagine today, if every one of you catch what it means to live a lifestyle of faith, and as you step out, you do great exploit for God, you are, are multiplying the spirit of faith in you. And many church members, I mean, in these 15 years, thousands of people have come through the marriage door, new, new garden door, and this door, and they've gone back. And they've written back to me. They're asking for this, this journal, for their cell group, for their church. They're asking for some of the training materials that they receive here, the marketplace training. They are multiplying it in their own church in Europe, in US, in Asia. So God is bringing to pass whatever He has promised me. And I'm walking in the will of God till today. So my challenge to you is, what has God been speaking to you? Are you doing things your way or are you doing things God's way? 
If you are doing things God's way, God will grant you the grace to stand up in, in between the heart, between the rock and the hard place during this difficult time. There will be that grace there for you. So when, when I came here, you know, at ground zero before ICS was built, and I was processing, I said, God, what do you want me to do? What do you want, how, how should you want me to do it? Then in 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 2, the Lord spoke to me. All this is in my journal. I can show it to you. 2 Samuel 5, 2 says, And in the past, when Saul was king over us, you were the one who led Israel out and brought them in. And the Lord said to you, You shall shepherd my people Israel and be ruler over Israel. Shepherding means pastoring. So I said, okay, God. I'm okay. I'll pastor the international church because you called me to do it. That's the reason why I'm still here after 15 years. It is a calling, not a job. I did not come because I'm a trailing spouse. I came because God calls. And I will not leave until He says so. Amen. But same for you. I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about you today. I know my call. But do you know your call? Do you know why you're in this company? You're in this company not just because you make the millions. You're there because of the gospel. There are people around you who are yet to be saved. There are people around you who still do not know Jesus. You are the one who is the messenger that God has called. You are in the corporate world because you have that experience, that gifting. You are uniquely made. You have a strategic mind. You are put in that position to be a person of influence. You are not just there for yourself. You are there for the Lord because He has called you to be in Shanghai. And you will continue to be in Shanghai until He says so. Amen. Amen. Maybe you're here today. You're, you're saying, God, no, I... I. Maybe you're at a crossroad. You say, Father, I got 10 million in my bank. I'm at a crossroad whether I should stay or leave or start a business. I'm talking to the man today. You have to rise up as the head of the house, especially during critical time. You are the spiritual leader. You're supposed to hear God. A leader is a pathfinder. You find that path, you lead your family. Don't wait for your wife because your wife is not called to be the head of the house. You are called to be the head of the house. You are the pathfinder. God has called a man to be the head of the family, spiritual head. You be the head. You lead. And don't leave until God says so. If God say to stay, He will grant you the grace. If God asks you to leave, He will make the way. Amen? Amen. And then I, are you ready to another journey? So I talk to God, God, so, so how, how, I have this idea how to do things and you know, in fact, someone, when, I, when we first started church, someone came up to me and say, Pastor Daniel, you're Singaporean, you know. I say, I know. Most international churches, senior pastors are not Singaporeans. I say, I know. You don't have an American accent, I know. You don't have a British accent, I know. I'm happy that I'm a Singaporean. I'm not here being successful because of who I am. ICS is doing well because of who he is. Amen. If you are still basing your abilities to stay in the company, Of course, God used your experience, your talents. But if you're still using your own strength to live your own life and to do well, let me tell you, you're in trouble. Because there will always be someone smarter, more connected, more intelligent, more savvy than you. So when I saw the Lord, I said, God, how do you want me to run this church? 2 Samuel chapter 3 verse, chapter 2 Samuel chapter 7, 2 Samuel chapter 7, chapter 3, uh, verse 3 to 5, 8 to 9, he told me, 
Then Nathan said to the king, Go do all that is in your heart, for the Lord is with you. But it happened that night that the word of the Lord came to Nathan, saying, Go and tell my servant David, Thus said the Lord, Would you build a house for me to dwell in? Now therefore, thus shall you say to my servant David, Thus said the Lord of hosts, I will look, took, I took you from the sheepfold, from following the sheep to be the ruler over my people, over Israel. And I have been with you wherever you have gone, and I have cut off all your enemies from before you, and made you a great name like the name of the great men who are on the earth. So it's an assurance that God said, God told me, say, Daniel, whatever I have placed in your heart, just execute it. And you can ask all my colleagues and all the ministry head and cell leaders that ICS will not execute any ministry unless the Lord placed in my heart as your senior pastor to do it. Because when God roll out the ministry, God will back it out with the money, with the manpower, with the government connection and everything. I want you to see that God journeyed with me every step of the way in China, before China, 17 years ago before I came, and every year, or every month, every year till today. You can do it. It's through journaling. It's through being humble, being obedient, walking in the will of God. I'm building deep for you from the past two sermons that I preached to you. Consecration, obedience, step up in faith. Faith believes in the impossible. Nobody ever knew that we can ever have an international church in a hotel building. Most of the international church are in church buildings. ICS is the only church with the license to meet in the hotel, from New Garden Hotel to Marriott Hotel to here. In fact, ICS was birth. God used a government official who have travelled across Europe who wanted to retain foreigners in, Shang, in, in Hongqiao area, he wrote a letter to the local government asking for international church to be established here so that foreigners will invest in Changning district and in, 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 in Pusi. And God used man, not even a Christian, to write that letter to the Municipal Religious Affair Bureau Christian Council. They did a, a study, a market study of whether there are Christians here. Then they identified New Garden Hotel and to today, our license is Millennium Hotel. So my personal conviction is, when we step out in faith, just like Abraham stepped out in faith, not knowing where he was going, God will pave the way, God will give the resources, God will give the connection, God will give the strategy, and whatever, whenever we step into God's calling and strategy, He will bless the work of our hands. Do you want God to bless the work of your hands? Walk in His will. Walk in His calling. Be a good steward of God. You can start young. You don't have to fumble in the world and go through hard, all the hard knocks, then come back to God. Do it now. Set the foundation right. Parents, model for your children. If we don't model for our children, they will go the way of the world. They will crash. They will compromise with the world. But if we walk, if we bring them up according to the ways of the, world, of the Lord, not just in bringing them to Bible study, we model our Christian walk with, for them. How we pray, how we seek the face of God, how do we walk out in faith? That's bringing up our children in the ways of the Lord. The key is God has spoken and Sarah considered God to be faithful to His promise. Genesis 15, 5 says, Therefore, then he brought him outside and said, Look now towards heaven and count the stars if you are able to number them. And he said to him, So shall your descendants be. God showed Abraham that you will be a father of many nations. But at, the, at that time, it was difficult for them to conceive the idea because they were really old. I mean, Abraham was really about 100 years old and Sarah was past the age of childbirth. But they believed. 
Because God says so. Let me substantiate it through the Bible, okay? Romans, Romans chapter 4, verse 17 to 21. Read, read, read with me. It says, As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him whom he believed. God who gave life to the dead and called those things that do not exist as though they did. Who contrary to hope, in hope believed, so that he became a father of many nations according to what was spoken. According to what was spoken. So your show shall your descendants be. And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body being dead, already dead, since he was about 100 years old, and the deadness of Sarah's womb, he did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully convinced that what he had promised was well, he was able to perform. So there's always a fight of faith in our Christian walk as we walk out the calling of God in our lives. What the natural circumstances is telling us, the natural circumstances for Abraham and Sarah was he was 100 years, 100 years old, Sarah was already past the age of childbearing. It was not possible. But yet God had brought him out and said, you, Abraham, you'll be a father of many nations. Just like the stars in heaven. Abraham believed. And when they believed, Sarah conceived, although she fumbled. But she conceived Isaac. And through the Abrahamic covenant, all the families of the earth will be blessed. That's why today you and I, we are here. Forty over nations are here because God fulfilled His promise through the Messiah. Through 42 generations, the Messiah came to fulfill the Abrahamic covenant. If you have a God who can remember after 42 generations, you can trust Him. You can trust His character. You can trust His word that whatever He promised you will come to pass. But, the prerequisite is He must have spoken to you. And as you walk out, there will be contrary information. But you choose to believe. Choose to press in. Not moved by the circumstances. Not moved by the data. But because God has spoken, you start the business. Because God has spoken, you move to the new country. If God has spoken to migrate, you migrate. You might not be doing the same kind of jobs that you're doing there, but because of your experience in Shanghai, you can start a new business if God calls you. And that's why He's a God who makes a way in the wilderness and a stream in the desert. That's experiencing God. Amen. And when things have a breakthrough, you give glory to God. It's not about you, it's about God. But there will always be a struggle. Let me bring you back to the email from the HR director. Even though you have the offer, you still is uncertain. You are more certain when you see the email. Likewise, in closing, Thomas, when he was told, by the other disciples that Jesus has resurrected from the dead. What did Thomas say? I will not believe until I see his nail pierced hand and sight. And when Jesus appeared to him and said, do not be unbelieving, but believe. Blessed are those who do not see, but yet believed. The Christian walk of faith is always Believing without seeing. So, before you step out in starting a new business, internal posting, migrating, and any other major decision, please remember what I said for the past three Sundays, including today the four safeguards. Book, chapter and verse, journal, that God has spoken to you. You know that you know that you know between you and God. This is the scripture that God has given to you. Don't deceive yourself. Don't be foolish. Don't be presumptuous. You know that it is God speaking to you. Inner witness of the Holy Spirit is a second safeguard, whether you have peace. Third safeguard, godly counsel. 
Go to your pastor, go to your cell leader and say, you know, I perceive and I think that this is what God is speaking to me. If you come to your pastor and say, I think God has already spoken to me, I'm, I'm ready to act, change job. No need to meet your pastor if you've already made your decision. Because what you want him to say to you, if you've already made a decision, right? The last safeguard is dreams and vision. Dreams and vision is only, if you have, fine. If you don't have, it's okay. But don't go around looking for prophets and say, do you have a word for me? Do you have a word for me? Many of you are parents here. Will you call your siblings and say, can you call my son and tell him to come home? Unless you have a strained relationship, right? But you have a close relationship with your son, you call your son directly. Talk to your son. You are not an illegitimate child in the kingdom of God. Yet to all who receive him, to those who believe in his name, he gave them the right to become children of God. You are a child of the living God. God will speak to you personally. If there's ever a confirmation that comes from a prophetic utterance, it is just a confirmation of what God has already spoken to you. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to speak to all the charismatic Christians in this church. Don't go running around asking prophets, do you have a word for me? Don't come to me. I say, Pastor, you have a word for me? I will say, yes, you're confused. <laughs> go and read the word. Amen. In closing, really closing, <laughs> please don't be offended by what I'm saying today, including the illustration of moving to a new country for citizenship. I have no harm. I don't mean any harm. I'm not talking about politics. I'm just being honestly concerned to whichever country that you go to, there are so many moving parts. The economy is moving so differently from a unipolar world to a multipolar world. We really do not know what's ahead of us for the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years. Only God knows. And as a child of the living God, my humble plea to you is, walk with God. Let's bow our head and pray. With every head bowed and every eyes closed, I'd like to ask a very critical question. If you're here with us, you're not a Christian. You have never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Saviour. But today, you'd like to receive Christ as your Lord and Saviour, to walk with Him, for Him to walk with you. I'd like to pray with you, say a prayer with you. If that's you, would just raise up your right hand and put it down. Very quickly, just raise up your right hand and put it down. Anyone here? You're not a Christian, but you'd like to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Saviour today. Just raise up your hand and put it down. Anybody? If not, Father, I praise you and thank you that your word has gone forth. It will not return void before you. It shall accomplish all that your purpose for it to do. I pray for everyone in this room. I pray that, Father, they will begin to walk with you and experience you because you want to walk with them. You want to journey with them because that's the very reason that you sent Jesus to redeem us and restore that relationship that Adam and Eve once upon a time had with you. I pray that Father, all of us will grow spiritually. All of us will get to know you better. Not just know about you, but know you. I pray that the Holy Spirit just move through this room from the front to the back, to the left, to the right to minister to your children and your children alone. For those who are fearful, I pray that Father, your grace will just and your love will just engulf their heart. May the Holy Spirit comfort them. May your peace just saturate their heart and mind, Christ Jesus. Assure them that you never leave them nor forsake them. Assure them that you have good thoughts for them. Plan to prosper them, not to harm them, to give them a good future and an expected end. I pray that none of us will run ahead of you, but all of us will follow closely behind your leadership. And I pray for all husbands and fathers to rise up, to take that spiritual leadership of the home to find a path if they are at the fork road of their lives. Now may the love of the Father, 
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Glory to God.